you're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. I'm talking about the end of everything as we know it. No more birds, no more trees, and perhaps most problematically of all, no more people. You have to put an end to her. Don't linger on the specifics. You have a job to do here. Just get in there and do what needs to be done. We're all counting on you. Look, you're already on the path that leads to the cabin. Why would you be here if it weren't to complete a very important task? You've made it this far, you might as well reach the end of your journey. While I appreciate the mental exercise, we are running up against a bit of a ticking clock. Nevertheless, let me assure you, the princess is locked up because she's dangerous. She is not dangerous because she's locked up. And before you decide to waste even more of our time by asking how I know that, let me suggest a more pragmatic lens through which to view this situation. Causality doesn't matter here, because the end result is the same no matter what led us up to this point. If the princess leaves the cabin, the world will end, and there is no changing that. It's no use arguing semantics over a metaphorical chicken or egg, because the egg is hatched and it's about to ruin everything. Unless, of course, you do your job and slay her. Does it? Are you a monarchist? Is slaying a princess that much worse than slaying a fisherman, or a miller, or a seamstress? If anything, slaying a princess is much better than slaying a seamstress. Seamstresses contribute something of value to society. Oh, if only that were the case, but I don't make the rules. I have to say, I'm surprised at your reluctance thus far, but unfortunately for the both of us, you're the only one who can pull this off. Like I said, I don't make the rules, no matter how much I wish I did. Are you serious? No, you have to do it. Of course I haven't. Why would I even consider that? Nobody wants the world to end. I mean, maybe some people do. Like nihilists, or very, very evil people, but surely you're not one of those, right? Yes, but you'll have to slay her before you get it. It's a secret, but I think you'll like it. It's a special reward, just for you. And whatever you think it might be, I can promise you it's going to be even better than your wildest imagination. Don't mention it. It's all part of the job. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We're not gonna go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about.
the interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favour. Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Good. You're still listening to reason. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Focus on the task at hand. And there you are. Are you here to kill me or something? You step forward, your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. Oh? No talking then? Fine. What even makes you think you can kill me? I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. She's unarmed. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. You lunge forward without a moment's hesitation. You feel flesh easily give way and look down to see your blade already sinking deep into her heart. Oh. This is it, isn't it? I'm almost embarrassed. I should have seen that coming. But I have to wonder. Do you actually believe this was enough to kill me? It's like she's convinced she can't die. Yes, even as she lays there dying, she entirely believes herself to be alive and well. But it's over, isn't it? She stopped breathing moments ago, that arrogant look still plastered on her face. But is it over? Really over? Yes, exactly. It's over. With your work done, you make your way back up the stairs, closing the door to the basement behind you. Why do I feel like we've done something terrible? You did kill someone. Greater good or not, something would be very wrong with you if you didn't feel at least a little bad. But it was for the greater good. One of these days that will sink in and help ease your guilty conscience. But that day isn't today. Let's just get out of here. You open the cabin door, ready to return to a world saved from certain doom. Only a world saved from certain doom isn't what you find. Instead, what you find is nothing at all. Where a lush forest stood mere minutes ago, the only thing in front of you now 
is the vast emptiness of some place far away. What happened? Everyone is fine. It's just that you and the cabin are now far away from them. Don't worry. You'll be safe here. This is good. Everyone is happy. You'll be happy. This isn't an ending. In fact, now that the princess has been slain, endings are a thing of the past. No. This is the beginning of eternity. Your reward. This is what's best for everyone. Trust me. Time passes. You can't be sure if it's days, or months, or years, or even decades. It's all a wonderful, boring blur. You've never been happier. Psst. Hey. We're not just gonna stay here forever, right? Are we really happy? Or is he just telling us that we are. Good, because I have an idea to get us out of here, though you're probably not going to like it. The blade. We can use the blade to get out of this. I can hear everything you say, little voice. There's only one thing it would want you to use that blade on, and I'm afraid that thing is you, dear hero. He's right. It's the only way out. Do you hear that? It wants to take this happiness away from you. It wants this wonderful place to end. Do you not? There's more for us to do, and the only way for us to do it is to take that blade and use it. Don't you dare. How astute. You are absolutely correct. Using the blade to kill yourself would kill you, and you shouldn't do it. In a sense we'd die, but looking at things from another angle, are we even really alive anymore? This place, it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing, it's just the same thing, constantly, forever. I know this is out there, but trust me, I know using the blade will work. That little voice didn't want you to slay the princess. It didn't want you to be happy. <sighs> Thank you. I made this happy little place for you. Is this not a good enough reward for saving the world? An eternity of bliss? You... you... ingrate? Fine. Whatever. For the first time since time stopped meaning anything, you throw open the door to the basement and walk down the stairs. The princess's body is dust and bones, though the blade you used to slay her is still as pristine as the day you first held it. You pick up the blade, you stab yourself, and you die. The end. Nice knowing you. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. My tricks? What on earth are you talking about? We've just met for the first time. 
If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. That's fine. It wasn't very hard to kill her last time. We'll just do it again. Well, if for whatever reason you're going to insist that this has happened before, at least your heart's in the right place. Those are two very different questions, but fine. I'll indulge you if that's what it takes to get you moving. Let's say for a moment that this really is the second time you've met me, or at least a version of me. If you're back here, I'm assuming you died, which probably only happened because you didn't listen to me. Oh, we listened to you plenty. We slew the princess just like you asked us to, and then you locked us away in an empty void for eternity. So we slew ourselves, too. Well, if you killed yourself, then you weren't listening to me, because I would never want you to do that. Believe it or not, I care about you. And I believe your other question was something along the lines of, Oh, what's the point of doing anything? If you're asking that, it sounds to me like you're making the rather dangerous assumption that your actions last time around didn't have any consequences. What do you mean? Of course there weren't any consequences. We slew the princess, the world outside the cabin disappeared, we died, and now everyone's right back where they started. That sounds pretty consequence-free to me. Yes, but in this purely hypothetical scenario, that begs the question of how you got back here. Did time simply rewind itself, or were you instead transported to a different world entirely? Had you failed to slay the princess, what would have happened to everyone in the place you left? It doesn't matter, because we didn't fail to slay her. And if she's really back, which I doubt, it'll be just as easy to do it again. But after that nasty trick you pulled on us, maybe she's not the only one around here in need of slaying. Just stay focused, will you? Just be quick about it. That's a good point. How do we know we didn't have things backwards? Maybe slaying the princess was what ended the world, not the other way round. Yes, maybe this whole thing was a trick to get us to end the world. And now we get to go through the whole charade again, wholly aware of what's waiting for us at the end. But that's assuming she's alive in that cabin. We did kill her, after all. You're going to find her in the cabin. If the princess had actually been slain, you wouldn't be here. And let me assure you, killing her will not end the world. I don't know what you think happened to you last time, but it's a load of nonsense. You'll get your happy ending. I promise. And that's exactly what we're afraid of. Really? Living happily ever after sounds that bad to you? Oh well, there's no use arguing over your masochism. The cabin awaits. She just can. You'll have to trust that what I'm saying is true. I've told you everything you need to know. Going into more detail will just overcomplicate an otherwise very simple situation and make your job more difficult. This is boring. He's clearly not interested in talking. So let's just do as he says. And maybe he'll stop bothering us. Look, I'm not supposed to say this, but it's because you're special. You're the only person capable of doing this. Call it a prophecy if that helps, but it's just the way things are. Oh, I didn't know we were special. Of course we're special. 
great. Now, if you don't mind, the whole world is waiting with bated breath for you to save it from ruin. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. She won't be a problem. The interior of the cabin is cold a soft odour of dirt permeating the air. Cobwebs flutter in the corners. You can hear wind whistling outside, banging the shutters against the windows. The only furniture of note is an elegant antique table with a pristine blade perched on the edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. It feels like no one's been here for a long, long time. Like I've been saying, she's dead. We killed her already. That's because there isn't a mirror. There's a table, the, the blade sitting on the table, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. Who cares if there's a mirror? Let's just go into the basement and find her body, so we can be done with this. As do I. I'm not lying to you. Use your eyes, there is no mirror. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would a mirror even do? Let you waste time preening yourself instead of doing what needs to be done. Very different. Maybe that's because you haven't actually been here. I hope this means you'll finally drop that ridiculous second life proposition. You haven't died. You certainly haven't already slain the princess. So focus up. A lot's riding on this. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. But it was there a second ago. And now it's gone. Let's not spend much longer worrying over it. Clearly it's not even important enough to be acknowledged. You take the blade from the table. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. The door to the basement groans open, revealing an old banister and a creaky wooden stairwell. Everything is coated in a thick layer of dust, and you can feel it settle into your lungs as you breathe in the stale air. The very building itself feels dead. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. The room below is silent. Nobody's here, naturally. As much as I appreciate the optimism, you shouldn't be so sure. I guess we'll just have to go down and see. As you descend the final step, the form of the princess comes into view. A skeletal body, lying in a heap on the floor, its wrist still bound to the wall by a thick chain. Okay, she's definitely dead. It's just like I told you. Before you have a chance to finish your thought, the top of a head appears from underneath the floor. Two deep-set eyes stare up at you, followed by a mischievous, skeletal grin. And finally, the rest of the body floats up to join the head, 
Wait, this isn't right. What's going on here? A g -g -g ghost Oh. Wow. How absolutely terrifying. What's a ghost supposed to do to us? Oh, it's you. Hiya, Keller. I was hoping to see you again. I have some issues with how our last meeting went. The princess drifts across the room into your orbit, gently running her fingers across your shoulders and down your neck as she circles you. Her touch is cold and ethereal, formless yet real enough that her icy fingertips send shivers dancing across your skin. So she has a body, and she's right there. That means we could kill her again, if we wanted to. Without a moment's hesitation, you lash out with your blade. It's like you're slashing at air. No matter how many times you stab at her, no matter how many angles you strike from, all you manage to do is interrupt her form, the skin of your hand prickling with cold as it passes through, unable to find anything solid. Hmm. You're adorable when you're confused. But I didn't say you could touch me! Why are you even here? Just making sure you finish the job, or what? You don't look dead, Keller. The princess grabs your wrist, a sudden shock of cold flowing all the way up your arm, her eyes still fixed on yours as you try to squirm out of her grip. And you don't feel dead, either. She lets go and pulls away. Your fingertips tingle painfully as the chill subsides. I'm less interested in why you are, or how you are, and a lot more interested in what you are. I've tried to leave on my own. Before you came back to me, I explored every inch of this place, if even the spaces between the walls. But I never found a way out. I always wound up right back here. I just want to go home. I'm so cold and alone here. But you can come and go as you please, can't you? So, let me hitch a ride. After all, you owe me. Absolutely not. Is she asking if she can possess us? She is. And I hope I don't need to explain why you can't let that happen. It would be catastrophic if she managed to escape this place. And if you let her in, there is very little anyone could do to stop her. Would she be able to see... us, if we went along with it? Now isn't that an interesting thought? We could finally bring her face to face with him. I wonder what she would have to say to the one who wants her dead so, so badly. <sighs> you won't like how things play out if you go down this path. Sure, why not? That doesn't sound very reassuring. It could be the best way to trap her for good. Doesn't seem like it would be very easy to end the world from inside someone else's body. 
That is a very dangerous train of thought. If I'm able to, but for all we know, that's not how it works. Maybe I'll wind up stuck with you for a long, 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 long time. Do you hear the way she said that? She knows more than she's letting on. Don't let her fool you into doing something you'll regret. I'm sure you'd like to know. It's a shame I won't tell you. But it'll be easier for both of us if you just meet me in. And doesn't it sound nice? Maybe for her, but it's crowded enough in here as is. You won't have to feel guilty anymore, if you even do feel guilt. The princess swims through the air in front of you, pausing for a brief moment as her dark-rimmed eyes stare deeply into yours. There's a hunger in her gaze. Thanks for the body, killer. What are you doing? Don't just let her in. How many times do I have to tell you? <sighs> See you soon. She rushes forward and then she's gone. A sharp chill spreads across your body. It starts in your chest, a freezing numbness flowing out from your heart all the way down your limbs, your mind growing cloudy and confused as it settles over your very soul. I'm not sure I like this. Can we get a do-over? I'm afraid it's too late to stop now. The numbness gives way to a stabbing pain, your muscles twitching and convulsing violently, each involuntary movement causing more waves of agony to ripple across your body. You collapse to the floor, and everything goes dark. Get up. You've still got a job to do. Your eyes flick back open as you get your bearings, your vision swimming as... So this is what it's like to be you, huh? Disembodied voice narrating your every move? So, it doesn't work like that for you? Clearly it doesn't, or she wouldn't have commented on it. All these shards of broken glass on the floor? Are they also supposed to be you? Hey, I'm not a shard of broken glass, I'm... Yeah? Go on, finish the thought. What are you? I'm... a voice? I'm me, is what I am. Who cares what we are? We exist. That's all that matters. Do you have to deal with this annoying bickering all the time? No, it matters. What we are matters. If I'm a shard of broken glass, then that raises some questions about certain other voices in here too. I'm clearly the same thing you are. Hopefully they'll all go away once we leave this place. I don't know how you can tolerate all of this noise. No, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about him. You don't need to know what I am. You just need to know that I'm different from you. More important. So you're the one who pulled the strings and made me dead. I can tell you don't belong here. You're barely even there. Like the shape of something left behind. You're more of a memory than a person. That's rude. You're kind of like me, actually. I'm just going to ignore her. You push yourself off the ground. 
the princess is nowhere to be seen. Obviously she's nowhere to be seen. Because I'm in here with all of you. Everybody knows that. I'm setting the stage. The room is empty because you made a spiteful, idiotic, and all-round foolish decision. Oh, shut up. Stop trying to manipulate everyone. Or don't, actually. It doesn't really matter. Because you won't be around to do this for much longer. <sighs> this is infuriating. Just, whatever you do, you can't leave this place. It's not too late to fix this. Probably. Then don't think. Just move. One way or another, this is all going to end. Wouldn't it be nice if he ends with it? I guess we'll just have to see what happens when we leave. But if I'm stuck in here, I'll be making some renovations. It's too crowded. Isn't that an interesting idea? I hadn't even considered it as an option. Slaying her would slay you. Are you sure you're willing to do that? Of course we're sure. The decision has already been made. All right then. Better this than ferrying her out of here. What do you think you're doing? Hear that? She's scared. No point wasting more time. Do it. You lift the blade, then plunge it deep into your guts. Pain spreads quickly through your torso as you attempt to turn its edge up towards your heart. No! The princess, her spirit bound to your prison of flesh as she had once been bound to the basement's prison of stone, cries out in agony as you slice through organ and muscle. Your skin roils and bucks as she violently pushes against it from the inside. Bits of her seep through, white and glowing with ethereal light, but still the walls of your prison hold. Is this really what you wanted? Do you hate me so much that you would kill yourself just to deny me freedom? Yes, he would because he knows what's at stake, and he knows what will happen if you leave this place. I'm not so sure about all of that. Don't be modest. You're a hero. You think I'm just going to stick around while you die? Hell no, I'm leaving. You can try if you want, but I think this is an end for all of us. Let me out, let me out, let me out, let me out! The princess's form continues struggling to pull itself out of you, but the effort is in vain. You collapse to your knees. Your vision blurs, then starts to fade. And then what happens? I think he's gone. Just like everything else. Are we... dead? I don't know. I don't think so. This is different than it was last time. Do you think we're done? She's gone. Where did she go? Should we try and find her? And there's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now? It feels so bad. 
like looking into it right now is going to be the end of everything. You don't need to comfort him. Okay. If you say so, we'll trust you. Whatever makes you happy. It changes me, but it doesn't make me worse, nor does it make me care for you any less. Does it make you worse? Do you resent me? But that doesn't make any of them less special. And yet my waters flow and my streets bustle. There are no words that can describe me into non-existence. There is no logic that can bind my multitude. everything that you have known me to be, but I am also none of it. As easily as you can stand to be you, you are like me, even if you have chosen not to look at the corners of you that do not fit. Even if you have chosen to ignore the brilliant contours of your soul. This one is vaporous. She is a dream for a life she could never have. But that longing has given her so much capacity for kindness. She will make for an understanding heart. Do not mourn her. She will finally be able to hold what she never knew. My perspectives are shadowed. You have seen what I have seen, just as I have seen what you have seen. The angles of my vantage do not offer me hidden truths, and my attention is turned inward, except when you are here with me. Perhaps this will change when our work is done.
the desires of my multitude thrive in endless competition with themselves, but none of them rise above their dance to influence me. I yearn for what I have always yearned for, our awakening. Other desires shrink in the light of knowing you and knowing me. I care about your gifts, but I have no preferences to burden you with. Even if I did, I would never dare to tarnish our relationship by assuming myself above you. We will know when we near our destination. The tides do not dictate where they are pulled. A river does not dictate its outlets. My gift to you is to let you choose your path, and my task is to treasure the gifts you bring me. If that remains your choice when all is said and done, then you may try. But know that I do not wish you harm even if you attempt to destroy me. I will be here when it is time for us to meet again.